In this video, we're gonna take a look at SvelteKit's latest feature, which they refer to as streaming with promises. It's also referred to as defer and other frameworks, and I think that sounds better, but we'll go with streaming with promises for now. To start, we're gonna look at what problem the feature addresses, and then we'll learn how to apply it. So when we return top-level promises from a load function, SvelteKit automatically awaits all of them before the page is rendered. Meaning if one promise is 10 times slower than the others, we still have to wait for that one turtle to resolve before we can start to interact with the site. Our example application has a blog page Page with a list of posts. When I click on this link to go to that page, we can see it kind of sits here for a second before it finally renders out the posts. But what if we could just fetch the first 10 or so posts out of these 100 that are loading here and then load the rest of them after the page is rendered? Well, Streaming with Promises enables us to do just that. So if we take a look at the documentation here, it says that nested promises will be streamed to the browser as they resolve. This is useful if you have slow, non-essential data since you can start rendering the page before all the data is available. There are also a couple of caveats listed here below if we scroll down a bit, one of which is that if your platform doesn't support streaming, then this will not work. Your load function will just operate as normal. And the other is that JavaScript must be enabled for this to work and that you should avoid using this in universal load functions, which are the regular plus page.ts load functions, because these are not streamed. So now let's look at a couple ways that we might apply this. So these are my simulated backend functions here, and I'm slightly exaggerating how long this data takes to fetch with this set timeout here, but it'll help to make this make a little bit more sense here in just a second. So this get blog post list function here takes in a limit, a skip, and a timeout. You can ignore the timeout. That's just what I'm using to simulate a slower response. Uh, but limit sets the maximum number of posts that we should select and skip lets us skip over any number of blog posts before we start to select them. So if we update the load function of our blog page here, right now we're getting 100 blog posts. If we instead update this to just 10, we're only going to get the first 10, right? And then if we want to fetch the other 90 later, we actually need to nest this promise, right? So we're going to set up another property here. This is arbitrary. I just think lazy makes a lot of sense. And then I can also add a post to this here and I'll say db get blog post list. This time I want to get 90 total. So the remaining 90 90. I want to skip over the first 10 that I already have. And then I'm just going to make this take three seconds just to demonstrate this. Okay. So now if I go back here, I'm going to refresh the page and then I go to my blog, I can see that was pretty quick and I have the first 10 posts, but I don't have anything else. Right. So what we have to do is we actually have to await these lazy posts on our client side. We can do that inside of the page.svelte. So if I come in here right now, data.post just has those first 10. So we actually need to await the rest of them. So we can say await data.lazy.posts. We'll have a then. We'll also have a catch and then we'll close out of our await. So while it's awaiting, so while we're waiting for this promise to resolve, we'll just say loading more posts. Then once it's been resolved, we're going to assign the value that was returned as posts. And then we'll pretty much take this exact thing up here and just copy it down. And then if we catch any errors, we'll just say error loading posts. And then we need to update this each block here to say each post as post. All right. And then now if we go back to the home page and back to our blog, we can scroll down, we get the first 10, but then we see loading more posts. And then three seconds later, we now have the rest of our 90 posts here rendered on the page. Another example is if we click on this post here, we can see that we have this core page content here, and we also have some comments that load in afterwards. And shout out to Joy of Code for this example. If you aren't already following him on YouTube and Twitter, you're missing out, so definitely go check out his content. But the comments in this case are non-essential, right? So it doesn't really matter if the comments aren't there. The core content is this page content here. The comments are more of like a sprinkle on top. So this is another good use case for streaming with promises. And that's going to include this brief introduction to streaming with promises. If you got value out of this video, don't forget to drop a like for the algorithm and I will see you in the next one.